Hello and welcome to Friday, August, uh, let's call it the 21st of 2020. And I don't want to alarm anyone, but September is right around the corner. But first, we have a week's worth of news to get to. So yes, hello and welcome to Cord Cutting Today, where we take a look at the past week in cord cutting and streaming news and round it all up for you. And if you're new to these parts, we have a news website called cordcuttersnews.com. And for all the stories we'll discuss on today's episode, we'll have links to our site in case you want to learn more about those topics. And of course, here comes my usual plea to consider those like and or subscribe buttons down below if you haven't done so already. We truly, truly appreciate it and we thank you for all the support for this channel. And so this week we're going to talk about some new channels and content from some of streaming's most popular names, a new over-the-air DVR option from Channel Master and TiVo, a couple service bundle deals, and more. So let's get right down into the news. First up, Pluto TV, that's a Viacom CBS's free streaming platform, announced a significant update this week. The change includes a reorganization of the service's hundreds of channels, plus the addition of several new options along with more CBS content. In all, Pluto TV now offers some 15 categories aimed at making it easier, hopefully, for you to find something to watch. Among the categories now are options like movies, news and opinion, classic TV, sports, gaming and anime, and more. The service also added a dozen channels of this week, including a dedicated Three's Companies channel, one for Johnny Carson's Tonight Show run, Western TV shows, and others. So if it's been a while since you checked Pluto TV out, it might be a decent time to pay a visit. And if you have used the service since these updates were implemented, feel free to let us know what you think so far in the comment section down below. Speaking of new channels, it looks like new service Peacock is adding a new free sports channel to its lineup along with a new original sports talk show. The new channel, which will go by the name NBC Sports on Peacock, launches on August 24th and will stream daytime live sports talk. So far, some pretty familiar shows have been announced for the channel, including PFT Live with Mike Florio, The Dan Patrick Show, and The Rich Eisen Show. In September, another show called Brother From Another with Holly and Smith will join the lineup alongside PFT PM. Brother From Another will feature co-hosts Michael Holly and Michael Smith, and they'll cover sports, of course, as well as culture, entertainment, and politics. And here's a quick look at the upcoming weekday schedule. And as noted, all these times are for the Eastern Time Zone. So if you've been hoping for some more free sports talk programming on NBC Universal's new streaming service, you won't have too much longer to wait. Again, NBC Sports on Peacock is set to launch on Monday, August 24th. Moving on, Roku has announced a slate of new kids and family programs for the Roku channel. Now that's the company's free streaming channel, and its kids and family section actually turned one year old this year. To mark the event, Roku is adding over a dozen new programs to the mix, so you'll be able to check out new options like The Adventurers, Axel Show, The Sharksons, Toddler Fun Learning, and several others. So if you've been looking for some new family-friendly viewing options, it might be worth checking out the Roku channel. And if you've already used the channel's kids and family section, feel free to let us know what you think so far of the selection on offer. Are there any titles that perhaps your kids have been clamoring for that you hope get added in the future? Sound off down below. And speaking of Roku, you may have noticed we've updated the studio recently to highlight some of the new gear we've added in recent weeks. And with a collection of streaming devices handy, we decided to pit them against each other to see how they stack up. So earlier this week, we published a video where we dive into the similarities and differences among four current Roku streamers, the Express, the Premiere, the Streaming Stick Plus, and the Ultra. And we also published a text version over on cordcuttersnews.com. So if you want to check out that head-to-head, -head, you'll find a link to the video version at the end of this episode, and we'll have a link to the website article down in the video description down below. And not to spoil anything, but yes, we did tease out some differences among those streaming devices. Feel free to check it out. In over-the-air or OTA news, Channel Master and TiVo announced an agreement this week that'll bring TiVo's DVR tech to antenna users. The new deal starts with Channel Master's launch of a 500 gigabyte version of TiVo's Edge DVR. It'll share the same features and capabilities as the two terabyte version, minus the overall storage capacity, of course. 
And in case you're wondering, 500 gigabytes will net you about 75 hours of HD content, and you'll be able to record two shows at once. And you can check out the 500 gigabyte version over on Channel Master's site. The DVR itself costs $199, but you'll need TiVo service to actually use it. There's another option on the site that includes a lifetime TiVo subscription, and that combo is currently on sale for $349. And by the way, if you're curious about over-the-air DVRs, we recently covered a couple other examples in a video recently, and we'll link to that video in the description down below in case you want to learn more. Over in the land of Netflix, it seems the streaming service is continuing to experiment with new features and test the waters to see how its users react. Case in point, a new shuffle feature that aims to serve up titles the user might enjoy. The new test feature shows up on the home screen under a user's profile icon, and it apparently pulls from shows or movies you're currently watching, have added to your watch list, or that bear similarities to stuff you've watched in the past. Of course, this isn't the first time Netflix has experimented with some sort of shuffle feature on its service. Back in 2019, the company tried out a version of the feature that would serve up random episodes within a series. That option popped up again earlier this year in the form of a new Play Something feature. This latest version of the Shuffle feature is reportedly being rolled out to a small number of subscribers as part of the test. And hey, if you're one of the handful of folks that have access to it, feel free to let us know what you think in the comment section down below. And while we're talking about new features, let's just open it up to all you Netflix users out there. What new option or feature would you like to see on the service next? Feel free to let us know. Meanwhile, we've seen some streaming service bundle options pop up from major companies in recent days. First up, Verizon's updated its line of unlimited plans, and depending on which specific tier you pick, you'll get offers for services like Disney+, Hulu, ESPN+, and Apple Music. Some plans include six months of Disney+, and Apple Music, while other options add Hulu and ESPN+, or cloud storage options to the mix. Verizon's unlimited plans start at $35 per line per month and get fancier and more unlimited -er from there. In any case, those new offers went live this week, and you can check out the details in our post linked down below in the video description. In other service bundle news, this week also saw the launch of new partnerships that combine Apple TV Plus with CBS All Access and Showtime streaming services. In this new bundle, Apple is offering CBS All Access and Showtime for $9.99 per month if you have an active Apple TV Plus subscription. If you want to do some quick math, it's worth pointing out that CBS All Access on its own normally costs $9.99 per month, and Showtime comes in at $10.99 per month. So you can think of this sort of like getting Showtime for free when you ordered CBS All Access. Plus, if you happen to be on Apple TV Plus's free year promo, then that might make for a pretty attractive bundle. Of course, that all depends on how much content you enjoy among that trio of services. But if you're interested and want to learn more, there's a link to our post down below as well. Next up, we have ourselves a sponsored post. So before I dive in, allow me to make it clear that with sponsored posts, our opinions remain our own. So as long as we're clear about that, let's get down to it. This weekend, sci-fi streaming channel Comet is celebrating the birthday of acclaimed author Ray Bradbury. To mark the occasion, the channel is running a marathon of episodes from Night Gallery and the Ray Bradbury Theater. Night Gallery is an anthology series that ran in the late 60s and early 70s, and you might recognize host Rod Serling from the Twilight Zone fame. Meanwhile, the Ray Bradbury Theater anthology series ran on HBO for a couple seasons in the mid-80s before getting picked up for a few more seasons on the USA Network. The marathon starts at noon on Saturday, August 22nd, and you can check out the full schedule in Jess's post, linked down below in the video description. And last but not least, we have an update on Charter's ongoing attempt to lift a ban on data caps and usage-based pricing. Now, you might recall last week, we recapped the events so far, including the current seven-year ban that prevents Charter from implementing data caps or usage-based pricing on its broadband plans. That ban was put into place as part of the 2016 merger with Time Warner Cable. And since Charter filed a petition to lift the ban earlier this year, consumer advocacy groups and industry heavyweights like Roku have chimed in to criticize the move. Meanwhile, Charter issued comments to the FCC claiming, among other things, that at least having the option for data caps and usage-based pricing opens them up to be more flexible and responsive to customer needs. Well, the latest on the matter is that the FCC announced an extension to the public comment period. 
The initial due date was set for late July, but it was then extended into August, where we saw companies like Roku chime in against data caps. This week, that deadline has been pushed further back to September 2nd, opening the door up for even more parties to weigh in on the petition and whether or not it's a good idea. So yes, we'll continue to keep an eye on the petition, and it'll be interesting to see who else voices an opinion on the matter between now and the new deadline of early September. And with that, we've come to the end of another week here at Cord Cutting Today. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. And of course, if this is your first time checking out the channel, you're more than welcome to stay a while and look around. Feel free to click those all-important like and subscribe buttons down below as well. Those help us in our mission to offer up more hardware comparisons, news, tips, resource guides, and more on our channel. And we'd love for you to become part of our cord cutting community. For now, though, I hope you all have a safe and wonderful August weekend. My name is Philip Palermo. Thank you all for watching. Happy streaming and take care.